Welcome to part two of the tutorial. If you missed out on part one, please be sure to check it out. We can actually start to map out the road. I should note that this method may seem odd, but I do guarantee you that this is the best workflow. So once you get used to it, it's actually quite quick and easy. Sketch out the road and then use split surface on the massing and side tab to separate the road into another segment. Here you can see the split road segment in blue. I will isolate element from the view control bar at the bottom of the screen and then export the segment out as a DWG. We are not using AutoCAD. This is just part of the workflow so that we can pick the top of surface cross section edge. Leave temp hide on and then link the previously exported segment straight back in. Make sure orient to view is checked. This will ensure the DWG lands directly on top of the split road segment. The next thing to do is to isolate element so that the road segment DWG is isolated. Then on the architecture tab, select roof by footprint. Revit may prompt you regarding a warning associated to work planes. In this example, I just proceed with the FFL, which is the car park road base level. And then from the draw tools, choose pick and start selecting the edge of the isolated DWG. Remember to use tab to accelerate the selection. Once all edges have been selected, move across to the properties palette, find slope and change this to zero. This will create a flat surface. Fill in any gaps and ensure that these two have a slope of 0%. With so many edges, it is easy to have some small gaps. Be sure to clean these up and proceed. Once finished, the roof element should be visible, but it doesn't follow the contours of the site. Well, not yet. Once again, find the DWG of the road segment and isolate it, but this time, go to the structure tab and select beams. On the options bar, it is important to pick 3D snapping. And then on the draw tools, choose pick and start to select the edges again. I now have one roof element and many beams and I need to combine these together. Let's start by isolating the two categories with the filter tool. Once isolated, select the roof element. This will activate the shape editing tools. Choose pick supports and then start picking the beams. And something totally amazing starts to happen. The road element slowly starts to conform to the contours of the site segment. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to do this. It is a little time consuming, but I reassure you that the result is totally worth it. It is always a good idea to purge the model of any non-required elements. We have now finished with the beams, so we can delete these. Likewise, select the DWG of the road segment and delete this also. It's all starting to come together 
By now, I am sure you can see the effectiveness of this workflow. I can now start to add some cool details, like curves. Using a sectional view, I can lower the roof base to allow for the curves. Because I have used roof elements to create the road, I can use roof by fascia to create the curves. Ensure you have a curve profile loaded into your project. I can use roof by fascia to create the curves. Then simply start picking the edges to place the curve. Moving along, we can start to add some more context. I will add some islands and some curbing to the car park. But the car park was done in a more conventional way, using flooring elements. And so, we can also use flooring to create the island shape. And so in this instance, I need to use railing to create the curve. Using the same curb profile factor, create the railing type and then start sketching. With the newer versions of Revit, where railing can host onto topo surfaces, it is possible to create the road curbing using the railing tool. However, I do find that it just doesn't work as well, especially on more complex sites. The roof element technique wins every time in my experience. Switch back to Enscape and I have the complete render. 